Welcome back again to the complex analysis lectures. Now, last class uh, I have introduced the concept of differentiability. Differentiability is the concept or the definition is exactly similar to the definition of uh, what you have seen it in the real variable case. But what we have an important result we are derived using the definitions since the limit can approach uh, to in various directions so set not using that way directions we have derived an important equation set of equations called Cauchy Riemann equations which relates your real and imaginary parts in terms of its partial derivative that means if f equal to u plus i v is an, uh, differentiable at a point if f is equal to u plus i v is differentiable at a point z not and then du by dx is equal to dv by dy and du by dy is equal to minus dv by this is a system of uh, because there are two unknowns u and v this is a system of partial differential equations with the two independent variables x and y. So, you have your familiar examples again. So, you have your familiar examples and you can compute again these are all exercises you should be working out exercises you can work out easily if you have a polynomial p z is a polynomial sigma a k z power k k equal to 0 to n then you can compute your p prime of z is equal to sigma first term will be k equal to 0 it will be a constant it will vanish so you will get a k k z power k minus 1 where now the k varies from 1 to n. And similarly this is a finite series and you have your infinite series e power z if you have if your fz is equal to e power z that is equal to sigma a, a k z power k k equal to 0 to infinity ok and then if you compute this will imply this you can do a small computation similarly and you can see that your f prime of z is e power z this is the property of real case you have seen and even in the other case you can see so using this you can see this variable d by dz of cos z is equal to minus sin z because cos z can be represented in, in terms of e power z and uh, d by d s z of sin z is equal to cos z and you can derive other formulas along the similar lines etc. And you also can derive d by d z of e power i z will be i e power i z and this is required to prove this one because cos z can be written as e power z plus e power i z, uh, uh, e, cos z can in a similar formulas can be used to represent e power z and things like that ok. So, you have your e power i z plus e power minus i z by 2. So, you need these formulas to derive. So, once you know this how to compute the derivative of the polynomial you can also give the derivative of the exponential function and then you can compute many other derivatives here ok. So, that is done. Now, let me uh, uh, write down as I said in the last lecture this is not only uh, a necessary condition that uh, now right now what we have derived in the last class that Cauchy Riemann equation is a necessary condition for a function f to be differentiable. Necessary condition means f is differentiable at z naught that implies Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied. Now, what I am going to state a general theorem if the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied then it is also differentiable. So, let me write down very uh, general uh, theorem f z equal to e power z ok. So, this is the theorem equivalence of Cauchy Riemann equivalence equivalence of C R equations ok. 
let f from omega subset of c to c uh, where omega is a region where omega is a region region means some open connected and all like that but you can think it as a kind of region which you are familiar curve bounded by some curves okay and uh, One so thing, yeah, one definition, let me complete it. F from, this is a definition, F from omega subset of C to C, then we say F is differentiable in omega, then we say F is differentiable in omega, if F is differentiable at all points in omega points in omega that is a thing definition. So, if the assume f is differentiable in omega that is very important not just at one point it is in a region if differentiable in omega this is the first uh, let me do that do not do that differentiable in omega then two conditions I want to write it then one u v are differentiable as real valued functions differentiable and so that differentiable means d u by d x d u by d y dv by dx dy by dy ok. So, as soon as it is differentiable this already I made it as a corollary this exists. What I want an additional condition is that this function should also be continuous or also continuous that is an important part also that is a very important assumption. So, it is not only the functions are differentiable the derivative need not be differentiable, uh, derivative need not this you know already in the complex analysis I cannot do that one because complex analysis is something deeper, but in real case, uh, real case look at this function f of x equal to x square if x is positive and minus x square if x is negative ok. This is x is positive you think then f is uh, no this is not the function I want to do it ok that is not the function I want to do it. I will come back to the example later sorry ok. So, that is not a, a thing uh, I want to tell something else but thing. So, you have an additional assumption. So, you need the differentiability, the differentiability only implies these things will exist ok. But then this differentiable function the its derivative need not be so I am assuming in that one that that derivatives are also continuous. So, to the CR equations we also say that there is a pet everyone uses Cauchy Riemann equations are CR equations, CR equations are satisfied, CR equations are satisfied. This is what we have proved in the last class, we have already done if f is differentiable these are all satisfied in omega. The converse part is what I am claiming, conversely assume 1 and 2 are satisfied, 1, 2 are satisfied, then f is differentiable. Okay. That is the thing which I want to do that one. Okay. So, let us uh, try to prove. So, this part is proved. So, the theorem consists of two parts. You have to understand that theorem very well when you write it. This is the given data, f is a given function, 
and then you are assuming this is the first result. You are assuming, so if you want you can write this is equal to 1, this is equal to 2 part. There are 2 parts for the theorem. You are assuming that f is differentiable, then there is a derivative, the corollary we have seen that it is derivative, differentiable and that derivatives are continuous. And to the CR equations as I is uh, what are the CR equations? du by dx equal to dv by dy and du by dy is equal to dv by dx. And then that is uh, one part. The second part is that I am assuming u and v are two real valued functions defined in domain omega in the two variable x and y for which these things are assumed, 1 and 2 are assumed. Then the function f is equal to u plus i v. So, maybe I will write then f is equal to u plus i v. So, the functions give the data given here is f, the data given here is u and v. There are u and v are two differentiable functions satisfying the CR equations. Then if you form f equal to u plus i v is differentiable. That is what the claim. So, the converse part. So, you want to prove the proof of the converse. As I said, the converse part of the proof involves little delicate argument, proof of converse, proof of converse. As I said, the converse part of the proof involves little delicate argument, explaining that delicate arguments in the, for this audience is bit difficult. So, we will almost give an more or less it is a proof, but then there are subtleties involved. That subtleties you can understand when you get more and more matured. So, that is what we want to do it. So, you want to prove the converse. So, you want to understand f of, so you want to understand this is what the, okay. So, what you want to understand? You want to prove the limit axis. So, want to understand the, want to understand the fraction, fraction f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught by delta z. This is what you want to understand. So, if you want to prove that the function f is, so you are assuming these two conditions 1 and 2, using that conditions 1 and 2, you want to prove that this limit of this as delta z goes to 0, this limit that fraction has a limit. That means f is differentiable as understood. So, I want to write down my f of z naught plus delta z. So, that is nothing but u of x naught plus delta x naught delta x y naught plus delta y plus i b of x naught plus delta x y naught plus delta y. This is the thing I want to understand. The delicate argument comes from here. I have a certain assumptions. Certain assumptions I am not giving with the Taylor's theorem. As I said, this is where your arguments are important. Using Taylor's theorem, I can approximately write this, that is where I said you need more better arguments, but let me not do it. This is approximately equal to, because there as I said that there will be an error term. I am trying to remove the error term, but can I do that? That is where the, uh, as I said, it is little subtle arguments is required, which let me not do that one. This will be nothing but by Taylor's theorem u of x naught y naught plus the partial derivative of u which exists you see du by dx into delta x okay and then plus du by dy into delta y that is what you do. So, you can approximately write this plus there will be an errors. I am trying to skip that error. Can I do it or not? That is a different thing. And then similarly I can write v naught x delta x y naught plus delta y is equal to v of 
x0 y0 plus dv by dx into delta x plus dv by dy into delta y that is that. I use this here and use this here and then I get a u0 x0 plus i v of x0 substitute these two things here. So, here you will be a term u of x0 y0 if I do this here I will get i v of x0 y0 that is nothing but my f of z0. So, this implies f of z0 plus delta z I am combining that term and bringing back here I will get minus f of z0 I will get how do I get f of z0 is nothing but u of x0 y0 plus i v of x0 y0 that is what you have to understand and that will come only these two terms will remain. So, this will be approximately equal to you will have du by dx delta x you have to uh, carefully write it here delta x plus du by dy delta y plus i the other part will have an i plus this one dv by dx into delta x plus dv by dy into delta y. So, do not have to remember blindly anything to do. Now, I combine all my delta x terms that will be equal to du by dx plus i dv by dx this is what I want if you know it very carefully because if at all the limit exists this is exactly my derivative I want to but I want delta I want to divide by delta z I have not seen delta z so far that is what I am going to see here I want to see divide by delta z not delta z and I do not see that here that is what I am going to do plus du by dy plus i dv by dy delta y. Okay. So far I have not used my Cauchy Riemann equations. Now I use my Cauchy Riemann equations. I use Cauchy Riemann use Cauchy Riemann here. Use Cauchy Riemann. If I use Cauchy Riemann, why do I get my du by dy? My this term, this term will be this term will be what do I get it du by dy is nothing but minus dv by dx ok and dv by dy will be i du by dx using Cauchy Riemann ok. So, into delta y that is what I get it, but my i will be i square I can replace my minus by i square I can replace that minus by i square i square dv by dx plus i du by dy into delta y. If I do that one I can take one i outside when I take one i outside I get exactly the similar term you see i outside I will get my uh, du by dx. So, if I take one i outside I will get exactly du by dx that is what is here and then i 1 i will be retained here dy. So, I will get exactly the similar term and that will be a 2 and this is a bit of algebra which you can do it. So, I can write that du by dx plus i dv by dx. So, from here I will get delta x I has I have taken i outside that will be i delta y. So, you will have i delta y ok, but this is nothing but your delta z you see. So, I have everything. So, with this I have f of z naught plus delta z minus f of z naught by delta z will be approximately du by dx plus i dv by dx. That means, as delta z down to 0, this goes to 0, that implies a prime of z naught is equal to du by dx at x naught y naught plus 
plus i dv by dx at x naught y naught. So you have your converse of the theorem proved. Okay. So, so once again let me uh, recall the theorem once again because this is the one of the most important part of your module one the complex analytic for complex differentiable functions and the Cauchy Riemann equations. Okay. So, a differentiability is equivalent in some sense to the Cauchy Riemann equations, extra regularity assumptions. These are called some sort of a regularity assumptions. So, a function is differentiable, then Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied and the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied and the function derivatives are continuous, then the function is differentiable. Okay. So, now let us go to some examples again. Okay. So, let us go to the examples. So, we have proved the converse. Let us go to few examples, one example which I have seen examples. So, okay. so you have your fz equal to mod z. So, we have already seen that f0 equal to 0. How do I prove that f0 uh, equal So, what will be f of z? f of delta z, I want to compute f of delta z, f of 0 plus delta z minus f of 0 by delta z. I want to compute my delta z whether this limit exists or not. That is what I am trying to look at it. But then f of delta z is equal to mod delta z by delta z. Now, I want to understand what happens as delta z goes to 0 in whatever way it is. Suppose I choose delta z equal to delta x tends to 0 and I am also taking delta x positive. So, what I am doing is that I want to understand this one, I am approaching along this direction. Okay. If I am approaching from that direction, my mode then that implies mod delta z by delta z is equal to delta x by delta x because mod delta z is mod delta x and delta x is positive I get is equal to 1. All the time get goes, it goes to 1. On the other hand, so that itself shows that it does not go to 0. So, want to see the limit. On the other hand, if I take delta z is equal to minus delta x with the delta x positive, then what happens to this quantity mod delta z by delta x delta z is equal to mod delta is this minus goes. So, I get delta x delta z is minus delta x. So, I have minus delta x that is equal to minus 1. So, I to approach in two different directions. If I choose this direction, I get another limit. If I choose this direction, I have a limit. That means the limit does exist. So, f prime of 0 does not exist. Okay. So, let me go to another example. So, let us do one, a few more examples. So, let us look at little bit changed. f z is equal to mod z square. If I do this mod z square, this is nothing but z z bar. Okay, that is equal to x plus i y into x minus i y, x square minus i square y square that will become x square. This is a very general phenomena, I will soon state that. That equal to x square plus i square. So, it is even though it is a complex variable, it is actually a real variable. Of course, this is also real valued. So, I will make a more general statement now. Okay. <coughs> Okay. So, in this case your u x y is equal to x square plus y square and v x y 
is equal to 0. So, what is your du by dx? du by dx is equal to 2x, du by dy is equal to 2y. So, if you look at it, du by dx at the origin is same. So, uh, so this is the Cauchy Riemann circuit. So, du by dx at the origin is equal to 0. That is the same as dv by dy. That is what you want for Cauchy Riemann square. And du by dy at the origin is equal to 0. That is the same as minus dv by dx. This is the Cauchy Riemann equation. But so the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied only at the origin. At the origin, of course, so it is not satisfied in a domain. So there is no question of verifying this one. That is the subtle points you have to understand. Here, Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied only at the origin. So you can, in general, you cannot conclude anything. But in this case, f prime of 0 exists. This you prove it, you can prove it. Only at the origin exists, nowhere else. So f prime of 0 exists only at the origin. But that is not because of the theorem which you can verify directly. Okay? Because this kind of trouble will not come because in the numerator you have delta x square. You will getting delta, if you take this one, it will be delta x square. And so, 1 delta x will cancel and it will go to 0. Okay? Here also f0 is equal to 0. So, this case you will get that one. Now, let us me come to a very third, in a general example. It is a very general example. Okay? Suppose f is real valued, f is equal to, f is equal to uxy is real valued. That is v equal to 0, v x y equal to 0. Then what will happen? My du by dx by Cauchy, suppose f is differentiable, what will happen? That implies Cauchy Riemann equations. That is the meaning, right? That means my du by dx should be equal to dv by dy. That, but v is equal to 0, so that implies. Similarly, what is my du by dy? du by dy is equal to minus dv by dx. That is equal to again 0. What does that imply? If you have a real valued function, my du by dx has to be 0. And if is f is differentiable, du by dx will be 0, du by dy will be 0. That implies u is a constant. What does that imply? A real valued function can be differentiable only if it is a constant function, nothing else. So, that is a very, very powerful thing. Okay, that is a very, very interesting. You cannot have a non-constant real valued function which is differentiable in the complex number system. That is a kind of a very powerful few things which you have to. This is true with even when f is purely imaginary. The result is also true. Result is also true. if f is purely imaginary. What is the meaning of purely imaginary? Means f is equal to i v and u is equal to 0. The same thing, if you do that one, in this case you conclude that dv by dx is equal to 0, dv by dy is equal to 0 and then you get a purely imaginary constant. So, a non-constant function cannot be differentiable in the complex analysis case. In the sense of complex differentiability, you cannot have such a interesting things. Now, one more example. So, these are all some examples which you, you, you can work. These are all very interesting examples we have to do. Suppose f is differentiable, 
it's a very the general uh, example it's not just one example i'm giving a very very general thing but so uh, this actually brings the power of differentiability power the differentiability concept uh, imposes lot of restrictions on your function okay and you later you will see much more may not be in this course but uh, a complex analysis you can see that if a function is differentiable in a i will make this remark later you, later you will see a very very powerful thing which is not true in the real case if a function is differentiable in a region then that function is infinitely many differentiable but that's not true in the real case you can have once differentiable functions but not twice twelve is differentiable functions that thing so it is much more involved this remark again i will make it today either today at the end of it, the lecture or uh, uh, tomorrow in the next lecture suppose f is differentiable differentiable and mod f is constant this is a very nice general result constant then f is constant f is a constant I am only telling mod f is constant. So, let me give you a very simple proof of this. It is a, a not really a simple, it is a simple proof, but it is very interesting proof. So, it is nice that the student should learn such proofs. Only through the proofs and examples, you will get a good feeling of the subject. If you do not do examples, or if you do not do exercises, and if you do not learn the proofs, if you do not learn the theorems, you will not be able to appreciate a subject. So, what do I want to prove it? So, whenever you are trying to attempt to give a proof, you have to first think that what to be proved. So, that is where your starting point. So, if your starting point is done, if you understand your theorem properly, and if you understand what to be proved, if you can get a good feeling of that, then half the work is done. So, you want to do one of the days if you know some little bit of calcula to prove f is a constant the best thing is to prove one of the best thing is to prove f prime is 0 right to prove that f prime of z is equal to 0 for all z whatever it is wherever it is once you prove this one you can prove that f is a constant. So, try to understand what is f z if f z is equal to u plus i v then let us try it is enough to prove modulus because if modulus is 0 that means the length is 0 only at the origin then z will be 0 that result probably you know it right this result you know that mod z equal to 0 if and only if z is equal to 0 ok this you please understand if you do not know it ok that is true because mod z is x square plus y square mod z equal to 0 implies x square plus y square equal to 0 that is if and only if x equal to 0 y equal to 0 that is if and only if z equal to 0. So, that is a trivial thing. So, if you know that if you want to prove this you prove this is equal to 0, but what is this? This is equal to square root of u square this is all functions of x y keep that in mind u x y plus u square these are all functions of x. So, you want to prove that that is 0. Since this is 0, you have to prove both separately. Now, what is given to you? So, this is what to be proved. That is what we understood first. And what is given? Your mod f is constant is given. Okay. So, what is mod f? Sorry, maybe I made some small error here. Small error here. f z equal to this thing. Then f prime of z is equal to u x plus i v x that is a small error which you correct it and then I want to see modulus of f prime of z that is equal to square root of u x square plus u y square what I have written earlier was a mod f square. So, this I want to show it is 0 that is what my aim. So, what is given I given that mod f equal to a, a constant that implies if I square it, I will get u square plus v square equal to a square a constant. 
another constant. Now differentiate, so I am going to give you a proof, I want to show that. Differentiate with respect to x and y, with respect to x, y, if I differentiate this with respect to x, 2u u x plus 2v v x equal to 0 and then differentiate with respect to y, 2u u y plus 2v v y is equal to 0. So, remove 2 here and still you get this one, u u x v v x is equal to, now, okay, what do I want? Yeah, now square it, square it. What you will get is square it, this whole square I will get u square because I know that I need u x square, that is what I am looking at, u x square plus v square v x square plus 2 u v u x v x equal to 0. Square this, the second equation you square it, you get u square u y square plus v square u y square okay, plus 2 u v u y v y. Do you observe something here? If you look at these two terms, u x equal to v y, v x equal to minus u y. So, these two terms are same except for a sign change. That is due to cauchy riemann equation and you are given f is differentiable. So, using CR, so this equation is the negative of this equation. Okay. So, use Cauchy Riemann equation, I will not do the entire algebra here because that is time consuming which you can do it. So, if I use Cauchy Riemann equation and add the above and add the above two equations, two equations, what I am trying to say is that these two terms will get cancelled because these two terms are the similar terms except for a sign change. Hence, this term will be negative of this term. Now, again if I do it, the negative sign will not affect here because of the square because you are, you have your u x plus v x square, v x square. So, I get u y I can, so u y square will be the same as v x square because there won't be a sign change because of the thing. So, these two terms are same, these two terms are the same, okay. So, that implies, so using that, so you use Cauchy Riemann equations to cancel these things and use Cauchy Riemann equations here to manage this term will imply, do that little bit of algebra using the Cauchy Riemann equation u square plus v square into u x square plus v x square. And that is what exactly I wanted. If u and v are 0, some points it can happen. If this is 0, u and v will be 0. But then u and v are 0, nothing to prove it, some point. But then otherwise this will be 0. And that is what exactly you want to prove it. So, this will imply u x square plus v x square equal to 0. You are proving that your f prime is equal to 0, leading that f is a constant. That is a very interesting example. Now, I will have uh, one more, uh, uh, probably I will give uh, one more example. So, you have plenty of examples here. Later, we will see the using Cauchy Riemann equations. In the last lecture, we will see some Cauchy, how to construct analytic functions using Cauchy Riemann equations. Before that, I have few more things to be done. So, this is a uh, one more example, in the Cauchy Riemann equations theorem, the equivalence of Cauchy Riemann equations theorem, you have shown that uh, the continuity of the partial derivatives are important. If you do not have the Cauchy continuity of the partial derivative, you may not get the converse. So, the continuity is very, very crucial of the partial derivative and I want to give you one such example now. 
This is a very interesting example of example uh, 4, 5. So consider f is equal to square root of x y. Okay. What is that? So u x y is equal to square root of x y mod x y may be because x and y can be negative. So mod x y and v x y equal to 0. So let us compute how the behavior of this. Thing. Look at this thing now. Okay. So yeah, if any one of them is 0, f will be 0. So u will be 0 because this is the line y equal to 0. And this is the line x equal to 0. So if you compute this along the line u x equal to 0 is equal to 0 for all x. That implies your du by dx equal to 0. Okay. Of course, d, this is always true dv by dy equal to x equal to 0 for always dv by dy equal to 0. This is always there because vx y is equal to 0. So you have similarly u 0 y is equal to 0 because again it is 0 that implies your du by dy is also equal to 0. Therefore, that implies Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied. Okay? Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied at the origin. In fact, it is satisfied along the axis. In fact, Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied at the origin. Are satisfied in particular at the origin. Uh, satisfied along x and y axis. Along x and y axis. In particular, CR equations are satisfied. Uh, at the origin. Okay. What we are going to show is that you, du by dx things etc are not continuous. But du by dx at 0, 0 which is 0 is uh, this is equal to 0 you know that from this definition is not continuous. continuous. So let us compute. So how do you check that? You want to understand my how my dx, du by dx behaves here. And then whether my d, so you can how to compute my du by dx in the neighborhood and then take the limit inside. That is the meaning of continuity. So take, uh, so let us take for x positive, x and y are positive. What is my u x y? my u x y is square root of x y. If x y. So if I take an x y here, my uh, x y here, my u x y is there is no modular because it is positive. So I can compute my du by dx at any point now. Okay. If I compute my du by dx at any point, this will be root y into 1 by root x. 1 by 2 root x, 6 power half, so 1 by root x. So you have your computations done here. Okay. 1 by 2 root x. Okay. So that is equal to, does not matter, y by x. Okay. So you have your du by dx. Now I want to know whether as x and y tends to origin, if I want to show this is continuous, du by dx is continuous, my du by dx should go to as x and y goes to 0. To, con to be continuous, as x and y tends to 0, my du by dx should go to this one. But I will show that it will not. So look at a line here, y equal to mx. So how does the point, if I take a point here, the point here, x m of x. Okay. So I am computing my du by dx at this point. So du by dx at that point, at that point m of x is nothing but 
m m x x cancel i will get root m by 2 m is not equal to 0 because it is a line. So, I take a line here. So, wherever I compute my du by dx, it will be constant and my du by dx is equal to root m by 2. So, as x tends to 0 or, or x tends to, so wherever I compute here, this has a value which is different from 0 and does not tend to 0, does not tend to 0 as x tends to 0. So, I do not have the continuity of du by dx at the origin. So, you see, so the continuity at the origin is embedded in the proof of that. That part you may not have seen the that part of it. These are the parts which we use it. I said initially when I am giving the converse part of the proof, there are some delicate arguments to remove the error. Many places I return approximately equal to and I removed my error. To justify that I can indeed remove my error, I need this continuity of all that one. Okay. So, that is an interesting thing. So, I have left with the 5 minutes I think. Okay. So, for this lecture, so I want to tell something more interesting now. Okay. So, with that let me do one, uh, uh, let me recall my remark again. All right. So, how much I should be able to do it? Let us see. So, I will uh, give some interesting remark. So, initially uh, recall my in important remark. Recall my important remark. Important remark. Okay. That is very crucial. What did I say initially? If you have a function f of z, I can write it u x, I am again once again recalling v of x y. The remark was that though it is a given as a my variable is z, the function is given in terms of x and y. So, the question is that can I write, can we write f z as a function of z? a function of z. And you have seen this typical example, I am recalling once again this function 2x plus i y, this is nothing but x plus i y, x plus z. You cannot write f z. It is a similar thing, if I have f z is equal to x minus i y, I cannot write this as a function of z. You can see that cannot write this as a function of z. If you want, you can derive contradictions, but you cannot do it. So, my question is that what are those functions? Find the class of functions, find the class of function which you can do this for this property that you can. So, in general, so you recall again when z is equal to x plus i y, z bar is equal to x minus i y then I can write my real part of x is equal to z plus z bar by 2. Probably you would have seen this observation and y is equal to z minus z bar by 2y. So, I can write my x in not in terms of z, I can write in terms of z and z bar. Okay, so, z bar comes into a play there. Similarly, y I can write in z and z bar. So, substituting here, I can at the most do f z in terms of u z plus z bar by 2, z minus z bar by 2 y. Okay. So, in general, I can only write it as a function of z and z bar, not function of z. Okay. So, let us now see. So, what is my wish? My wish that I want to write f of z as a function of 
z. That means I want this as a function of z means that its derivative with respect to z bar should be 0. In other words, is thus that implies f is a function, uh, f is independent of z bar, independent of z bar if df by dz bar is equal to 0. This is what I want it. So, I want to understand this operator. So, there is an operator d by dz bar. This is my operator. So, the main thing is that understanding this operator, what would be the derivative with respect to z bar. So, let us try to compute here. Maybe I will do it here. Okay. So, what is the, so z is a function of x and y. So, you think that x and y are independent variable, z and z bar. So, you are changing your variable. So, you are basically have x y variable. Correspondingly, you have z, z bar variable together, this comes together. Okay. So, with respect to, you can apply the formula, composite formula, whatever formula you call it, if it is a function of something, you can do that differentiation. So, my d by d z bar and z bar is a function of x and y. So, you differentiate with respect to x, d by dx into dx by dz bar plus d by dy into dy by dz bar. Okay, you can do that. But what is dx by dz bar? Uh, dx by x is here. dx by dz bar is equal to half. This is equal to half into d by dx. Okay. Uh, half d because and what is df by dz bar? dy by dz bar is equal to minus 1 over 2i, right? Am I right? dy by dz bar is equal to minus 1 over 1 here taken exact here. So, 1 by i into d by dy. So, my operator d by dz bar is this operator. And you know that 1 over i is equal to i if I take it here i square. So, this is nothing but d by dx. Maybe now you start recognizing this. This is exactly my derivative function, right? You remember f prime of z is equal to du by dx plus i du by dy. So, you will, you will have that derivatives coming into picture. So, now I want to apply to this function. So, I want to apply that. So, df I want, I, so you apply this one, df by dz bar equal to 0, you want to apply this, right, that is what my aim. I want to see f is a function of z alone, that means I want to see this one. So, I want to apply this, f is nothing but u plus iv, okay, f is, oh sorry, I did not write the v part here, so you also have to write v part here. So, plus i v of z plus z bar by 2, z minus z bar by 2i. And this is my f, f of z, z bar. So, now I want to apply these two operators to these issues. So, if I apply that one, I will get it half of d by dx plus i d by dy of u plus i v equal to 0. Here I am thinking u and v are functions of z and x and y and I get this one. So, if I, uh, uh, so if I compute, uh, if I equate my real and imaginary part, equate the or come uh, instead of equating taking real and imaginary parts, taking real and imaginary parts, what you will get it? So, you have du by dx, this will give you 
this will give you i into i minus so plus uh, minus dv by dy minus dv by dy equal to 0. Now equating real and imaginary, imaginary parts, I will get du by dy and then this one dv by dx plus dv by dx equal to 0. Now you do you see, you recognize here, this is nothing but, this is CR equations. A function is a function of real uh, z alone and if that satisfies the Cauchy Riemann equations and so that is it. So uh, if you uh, so the conditions which you are putting Cauchy Riemann equations which is equivalent to the differentiability is the same as and demanding the, uh, the function it is a function of z alone. In other words, uh, my genuine or true functions are functions which are differentiable, okay. So this operator is also denoted by d bar operator and uh, this called a d d bar operator plays a very, very crucial role in the analysis of, uh, uh, in the analysis of uh, complex theory. And in fact, in some sense you can say that complex function theory you can revolve around understanding this type of operators. So I think you got a you now good feeling about uh, all this kind of doubts why the functions are in general not functions of x and i, why it is a function of x and y, in general it is not a function of z, but the moment you put a differentiability, it tells you that it has to be a function of z alone. That is exactly what it will put a lot of conditions on the function, okay. So we will stop here and I will introduce you a new concept called analytic con uh, functions which is uh, that concepts are also there in the real variable case but I will just remark that that concept in the case of complex function theory is same as the differentiation concept but in the real case it is quite different, okay. But I will not prove anything there but I will tell you what that concept of analytic functions. Thank you.